Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Welcome to this introduction to Scanner. Scanner is a reactor-based synthesizer that was designed by the father of Reactor, Stefan Schmidt, and it was released by Native Instruments as a free download shortly before the holidays or during the holidays. Because of that, it didn't receive really the critical acclaim that it deserves. It's a truly unique and uh, powerful instrument. And so that's why I decided to do this series to draw your attention to what can be done with this and how it really is something that we haven't seen before in terms of synthesis. So as I said, it was released as a free download and it runs either on the full version of Reactor or on the free Reactor player that you can also get at the Native Instruments website. And so once you've uh, downloaded and installed this and used the Service Center to activate it, it will appear under the Player tab of uh, your Reactor uh, file browser. So don't look for it under Factory, it's actually under Player. And what we see here is this very uh, clean interface. At the top we have this sample. Uh, this is in fact the sample that uh, Scanner is using. And the term Scanner is very appropriate for this synthesizer because what you're doing in Scanner is taking a sample and using a variety of means to scan through the sample and produce wild out there sounds. Right? So in general what you're doing is using two oscillators, an LFO, and a whole bunch of other stuff to tell Scanner how to move through the sample. Now in the A view we have something very powerful which is this preset morpher. Scanner kind of is divided on, into these uh, eight kind of subset sound sections within a certain snapshot. Uh, I know that's kind of hard to understand but it's, it's more easily understood a, as I actually play or as you play a note. So if I, if I load Scanner I have this TX123 retro snapshot loaded. I play a note. We see over here that we have this kind of light green line and this is the playhead. This is the part of the sample that Scanner is currently occupying and moving through. Now if you look closely at that you can see it kind of wiggling back and forth and that's because it's scanning that very thin portion of this sample based upon all of these settings that we have here and a variety of other settings that are introduced in the B panel view. We're not going to touch that for now just because it's a little overwhelming. Uh, but once we dig deeper into this, we'll, we'll go into every single parameter. So what we have is this preset morpher. We have a single sample, but we have these eight, eight different kind of options of how to shape and scan through that sample. And so right now I'm on one. Now if I click on five, this snapshot five, or this preset five, as I'm playing, what you're going to see is that all of these, or, or a number of these parameters, begin to move in real time as this snapshot moves linearly to the fifth snapshot. And you'll also see the playhead here uh, transition over to the new point of this sample that uh, snapshot 5 tells it to occupy. So I know that's, that's a little mind-bending, but I'll play the note and I'll click on this and then you'll see this in action. <laughs> How's that for a wild sound? So you see that it moved, the uh, playhead moved from this area all the way over here. And there were also a variety of other changes. You saw this rate knob change and some other things. Now we'll get into all of that and, and we'll explain all of this in detail. But what I want you to understand is that there is this preset morphing function that allows you to move between snapshots in real time and completely fluidly. So let's do this again, moving over to Snapshot 7. Wow, that one was kind of nice. I almost had like a Boards of Canada type vibe to it. So now what you see is that we've moved to a different place, but now you can see it's kind of dropping back to where it began. And this is all based on the settings of this number 7 twin retro snapshot. Now one thing that's interesting and that you've probably noticed is that this sample itself didn't change. Every one of these snapshots in the eight uh, presets is using the same sample, but it's using it in a different way and it's using these parameters to modulate the sample in ways that are completely unlike the others. Now this is all very, very wild and it's very interesting, but I just want to give you a couple quick tips on getting going with this. Now here you have the preset morpher which we've already talked about, but there are a couple ways of telling the preset morpher how to work. Now this speed knob tells the uh, tell scanner how quickly to move between 
the two presets that you have uh, that you're moving from and moving to. So if I really crank this down, I have it set down to seven. You'll see that as I move to a different snapshot, let's move to or a different preset, let's move to five. You'll see how slowly that begins to move. And the position, the position knob indicates this in real time. Now as I crank this, you'll see that it moves much more quickly. Now the other thing that you can do is you're not limited to the individual snapshot or the individual preset positions. I'm sorry, I keep saying snapshot. This is term in terms of the reactor terminology. These are in fact snapshots, but this is called a preset morpher, so you can understand my confusion. Uh, but you're not limited to the presets themselves in the preset morpher. You can use this position knob to actually scroll to the exact spot in between in between the two presets that you wish to use. Right? And now, of course, this is going to move in a range between the snapshot that you've moved from and the snapshot you've moved to. If I select a different snapshot, then I can move it in that range. So you, 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 you start to have a sense for the possibilities here. Even within a single sample, you have an entire universe of sound. This is what makes this so unique. Now there are a couple other things that uh, I want to draw your attention to before I close out this intro video. I don't want to give you too much here because it just becomes overwhelming and then it's no fun and what's the point if it's no fun, right? So this global LFO is one of two LFOs that Scanner makes available to you. And it allows you, among other things, to modulate the preset morphing by using this LFO amount knob. Now, if I crank this up, right now it's set to zero, but if I crank this up, what it's going to do is look to the LFO to tell it how to move between these two snapshots, which are the ones that I've most recently used. And you'll see this in action. So you see, this rate is not available to us uh, for, for manipulation. Once you start using the LFO to modulate the preset morphing, a lot of this is going to start doing its own thing. But what you can do is change the position throughout which the preset morph uh, modulation is occurring. Right? So if you want to get it closer to your destination, for example, Once again, it's moving. You'll see that when you look at these snapshots, it's actually reaching a point where one snapshot becomes the other, where lost retro becomes motorway retro. There's kind of a tipping point at which one snapshot then becomes the other. Now, another thing you'll notice is that we have these source knobs over here, this source knob variation filter in space. These are macro controls that are very powerful as a result of having three different destinations that they control. And those destinations will be revealed when we go into the B panel view. But for right now, uh, keep in mind that the source is going to give you variations in the source of the sample, kind of where it's pulling the output from. And it results in pretty drastic changes. Variation is more fine tuned. But there's another way of doing this. So if I, if I pull down this LFO amount, I essentially am no longer modulating the uh, preset morpher position using the LFO. I can further use this LFO to modulate source. So this is kind of an uber modulation because you're talking about modulating a knob that is controlling up to three other knobs that are within the B view of, of the panel. So if I click on this LFO button below source, you'll see that the knob now becomes this perfect circle. And this is il illustrating the LFO modulation. If I crank this up, that's what you get, right? And of course, we, we can change the shape of the LFO wave from kind of a downward ramp to almost a triangle in the middle and then an upward ramp on the right. 
In any case, I just want to give you a taste for how to use this up front. Now, you, now you've learned how to move between these. And one other thing I should say is that uh, when you're when you're morphing, if you click a second time after you've initiated the morph, the ball will stop, and it will stop in this transitional period wherever you determine that you want it to stop. So that's a useful feature as well. Now, in, in future videos, we'll 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 fill in all the gaps here, but I want to give you a taste of what this can do and just get you going. Uh, get you interested in using this and kind of exploring what you can do. Now, of course, you can also use your own samples in the free ver or in the uh, full version of Reactor. You can drop your own samples in here and scan them and cr produce some really wild results. But I hope you found this interesting. I hope that uh, you will you will be interested in learning more about Scanner. You can come and join me at uh, bluewaterbst.com backslash scanner. And that will uh, allow you to learn more about Scanner and see some uh, more in-depth videos and uh, really get into it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you guys have a great time using Scanner. I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.